Galatians chapter 5. Alright, so um, I'm not, I'm quite sure, I don't know, y'all probably have. I know, you know, with me being gone for the past, um, the last week that I was gone, and I, I really didn't do too much interacting. Um, I did shoot some videos and stuff, but I really didn't do too much interacting and talking and all um, while I was gone this time. But I realized that I wonder if y'all, I even for um, Thursday night, y'all, didn't nobody say anything about it, and it just literally, like, through my mind on um, Thursday evening at 6.45, and I was um, probably at dinner. I kind of, like, went to dinner a lot more than what I usually do when I'm on the ships. But um, anyway, I'm not sure if y'all been paying attention to all of the controversy that I call it. I'm going to say controversy just because of difference of opinions. So I'm going to call it controversy. But if y'all have been paying attention to see uh, the controversy that is going on with several different uh, different topics and different things that's happening out here now where there is um, the interview with Shannon Sharp and Cat Williams that took high president, I mean like high president, I think in the first day it had 5 million views, 5 or 10 million views in a 24 hour period. So that is to let you know that that was like some high artillery. And then there was the situation with um, Pastor William Murphy and what he did with um, playing secular music at the watch night service. It made it all the way to CNN. I, I saw that myself. CNN was saying prominent pastor is catching backlash from, you know, um, watch night service. And also those are like huge headliners. And then there is the situation with Bishop T.D. Jakes where there is two guys that are saying that they are going to go public um, that were allegedly groomed by him and with grooming that mean that they get real close to you and uh you know literally you know in a in an effort to saying that they're gonna help you or whatever help to develop you and help to develop your ministry but then get you in a position as to where they begin to seduce you and so there was an actual receipt where <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's not easy to have to say because I don't put accusations on people at all, but there was an actual receipt as to where um, Bishop Jakes had sent a young man a um, <clears throat> that one of his mentees a picture, and in the picture it was like 2 something in the morning, and in the picture uh, he was saying, thinking about you, and you could see in the um in the video where he had actually like uh had his fist like clenched tight and like had his like you know how you squeeze your butt cheeks you could literally tell that he was like squeezing his butt cheeks with his chest out and hands real tight I uh, uh you don't believe me it's all you can look on Larry and you can actually see the you know the actual footage for that and so it was like uh like a wow moment for me and so there is so much other stuff there is um several different places where there's been so many things that have literally taken the stage now as to say like our uh, top presidents as to what has been going on behind the scenes with people and how people have been being um uh, I guess you could say abused or misused or however the case may be. The reason I want to, you know, talk to y'all concerning some of this stuff is is because is is happening in so many arenas. It's not just in the um church arena it's in the secular arena it's in um you know it's in the hollywood arena you see cat talking about it from the hollywood arena and all what i believe is is um i believe it's uh, relationships that are about to be brought to to the moment of truth and when i say relationships about to be brought to the moment of truth what I am saying is, is that if we have the wrong type of relationship with people, that it is going to be 
you know, literally brought to a, a moment of truth, a moment of place. Now, I'm going to give you a word that I believe um, is going to stand president in what I'm talking about. When I say relationships, I'm going to be bold enough to tell y'all that anywhere that you have, I have exhibit, exhibited idolatry. It's about to go under attack. And when I say um, under attack, What's about to happen is, is the real truth of the fact that it has been idolatry is about to be manifested. It's about to be manifested. You can be in a realm of idolatry and not know it. You can. You can be in idolatry and be unaware of it. Now, let me give y'all a, a moment to chime in on this to discuss it do y'all understand what i'm saying when i say that you can be in idolatry and not know it yes ma'am all right well tell me what am i talking about i mean Y'all can interact today, or do we need to cancel today? And I can shoot some more video footage. I think a form of idolatry will be um, of you not you being the one, and I need to know what's going on whenever. Um, a person, place, or thing take primary precedence over um, the simple things, or God, basically, but it can be simple things, especially God. Um, you don't even realize that sometimes you can be oblivious to the fact that you're idolizing it, whether it's, you know, cell phone, people, jobs, and, and different things like that, until it becomes to a place to where you're aware, because it's a solid form of worshiping the thing. Um, and you'll, you have a means of doing whatever, I guess I'm putting it as the right term, it, it has a mind of doing whatever to appease whatever that thing that's being idolized. Okay. But tell me, how is it that you could be in idolatry and not know it? That's what I want y'all to, you know, let's, let's start there. Tell me how. Do you think that you can be in idolatry, but not be aware of it? <clears throat> Are y'all connected this morning or not? Because if you're not, I can go on and do something else, y'all. I mean, you can find something else to do, too. I can no, shoot some video footage. You know, I mean, I'm not yes, going to be in here by myself this morning, you know, so it's like, yes. how can you be in idolatry and, and not know it? Just take a shot at what you think. I mean, I'm going to tell y'all something that's real simple and easy. And it's going to blow your mind just how simple and easy it is to be in it and not know it. Explain it to us, please. Self-desire. Um, you can be in idolatry and not know it if you don't know what idolatry is. True no facts. <laughs> if, okay, uh, the Lord tells us in the Ten Commandments to not, to, to be in idolatry. Okay, but, and he's saying to not put any other God before him. That's what he's saying. But if you've never been introduced to God, you're going to have idolatry. Because you've never been introduced to him. So people that do not know God, they are walking in idolatry. They're in idolatry to whatever they have made their God. Their parent can be their God. I've seen situations where that happens. If you don't know 
how to love God and don't know how to have a relationship with God, with God being God, then whatever rears you becomes your God. Whatever is taught to you becomes your God. So if uh, going after money is what's taught to you, then money is going to become your God. It's going to be your it's going to be idolatry. You're going to idolize it. If your parents is all you know, then you can take they can become your idols. If your children can become idolized. Because of the simple fact, if you do not know how to serve what is the number one thing to serve, then you're going to create other gods. I did that. I never knew what it was like to serve God, so I made me and my God. I remember when the Lord told me he was going to dethrone Quincy because I had made him my God. As a young lady, all I knew was was to get you a man and get you a man that takes care of you. They didn't tell me to get me a God or to get the God. I wasn't told that. I was told the ways of the world to get you a man that takes care of you, that pays bills and that type of stuff like that. So that became my God. That became the thing that I idolized because I did not know what to do with the right God. So everybody idolization is not because they just wrong. Some of it is because they have not been taught. When you don't know the truth, what are you forced to believe? The lie. A lie. Partial truth. The lie or partial truth. When you don't know the truth. And so some of the things that we have found ourselves caught up in is because we don't know the truth. We didn't know the truth. God becoming who he is to us now, y'all. Look how long it took in order for him to become that to us. Look how long, look how long it took. <laughs> he wasn't portrayed as God to us as little children. We may have heard of him you know, about this man that went to the cross and died for us. But it wasn't in a context of teaching and learning about him so that he becomes the number one factor in our life. And we're not idolizing anything else. I would be bold enough to tell y'all that we are all still in a position right now where we are killing idols in our lives. I'll be honest to say it. Amen. Amen. We are killing idols in our lives even right now still. There are certain things that mindsets and all that we are still in the process of having to shift away from because of the simple fact idolatry. Idolatry. And so what we're seeing and what we're going to see more of in 2024, I believe in the times to come, not just 2024, but in more futuristic days to come, what we're going to see is the things, the people and the places and things that we have made idols. We're going to see some challenges come in those places because God is taking down the false idols in order for him to take the the seat or the throne that he is supposed to have. So he's going to have to dethrone those things, you know, and some of those things are things that we didn't just say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to idolize this. No, some of the things we were, some of the things we were literally, you know, we were just coerced into, or it was a generational thing. We saw other people in the family do it. So we did it. So we picked it up, you know, and it's just an idol thing. 
and it became an idol thing. Um, there is something as simple, man. When I tell y'all the place and the position that I am in right now is one of the most crucial and critical places that I have ever been in. And I'm being completely honest with y'all. It is the most critical and crucial place I have ever been in. It is literally, um, I am literally warring my way through something. I mean, literally warring my way through something. And I am looking at it in a position of trying to see, is it something by way of idolatry as the reason why the things are happening the way that they are happening for me? Is it because God is putting me in a position as to where he is my God for real, real? And he is literally the one that orchestrates my life for real, real. And and what I am saying, I try to be as transparent with y'all as I can so that y'all can understand things um, through what I walk through so it can help you to go through your journey, you know, or you can avoid the journey altogether. If you can avoid it, then I would say take the avoidance. But if you have to walk through it, then if you can listen to the things that I say to you to help you to understand by me navigating, then by all means, let it help you. But this is the thing about it. Um I am in a position of questioning God, you know, and questioning or position to see God is this happening because of there of uh, there being like a form of idolatry that was that was there, a form of idolatry in in an essence of meaning that God is putting His people in a position as to where He's covering He He's covering His people. That's not to say that um, we're not going to have interaction with people and we're not going to have covenant relationships with people because covenant will always be there. Covenants will always be there. Covenants were there from the beginning. There was the first original covenant was the covenant that God cut with man. When God created man, God was cutting a covenant right then. And a covenant means a contract. It is a a, a literal uh, contract between two, meaning that we have agreement of what we're going to do and agreement of what we're not going to do. So that is covenant. So you will see where there was a God, there is there was God in the beginning and then God decided that he would cut covenant with himself and he drew man took man from the dust of the earth and created man breathed into the nostrils man became a living being and also you see where there was covenant then you see where there was another covenant that takes place where out of man becomes something so notice the the way that it is going it comes out of God originally then it comes out of man next because God says that to the man that it is not good that this man should be alone that I will make for him a help meet and so God puts the man to sleep and extracts the woman out of the man from his rib and so we see where there is now another covenant that has come. He literally takes and presents the woman to the man and, and the man says, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she came forth out of man. And the woman, the woe, uh, the W-O in the, in the beginning means it represents the womb, which means she has the ability to push forth. She has the ability to now bring life. And so you see that is the covenant with the man and, and the woman, which is husband and wife. So then you see where there was more covenant that was cut. When the man and the woman cut covenant, they now produce seed and it produced a child. So now there is covenant between the child and the parents, you know, so there is covenant. There is always going to be covenant that will be there. But the original covenant is the one that God is after. God is after the original covenant, which is the first covenant which is the covenant with God. The covenant with God. That is the position that has been faltered. That is the position that has literally taken, uh, it has taken back seat. It is it, all the other things. If you look at it and just look at life, y'all, you can see where all those other things have come before God. I need y'all to, to talk to me this morning to help me to let me know that you're hearing what I'm saying because you want to get this. I am so serious. You want to get this because all of those places where 
I have literally described covenant. If you will look, you will see that those things have literally tried to overshadow God. Right or wrong. People loving husbands more than they loving God. People loving wives more than they loving God. People loving children more than they're loving God. Uh, and so on. Have y'all seen that? Even to the point of people loving themselves more than loving God. And so God is after getting the original covenant back, getting things on track like they are supposed to be. Getting it back where it's supposed to be. So do not be surprised when you see relationships that you have start going under some, uh, somewhat what looks like attack. But it just may not be attack, y'all. It may not be attack. It may be right perspective. Okay, I, I, did y'all hear me? Yes. It may not be attack. So you'll be in there rebuking the devil and not getting nowhere. Yeah, I'm talking about, you know, I want the prayer warriors to, to stand with you because, you know, the, the devil trying to bust up your home and the devil trying to bust up this relationship here and da 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 da. And the devil trying to turn you and your children against each other. You're thinking that it's the devil, but what if it's not? Amen. Amen. Just really, really, really sincerely, what if it's not? What if it's right perspective have got to take place? What if things have got to be placed where they are supposed to be? Things have got to be put in alignment like they are supposed to be. Because there is an order to it. We just went through the order. What was the order, y'all? What was number one? What was the first covenant? God. And then God did what next? He made covenant with spouses. No, the second, that's not the second thing. That's not what he did next. Okay. That's not what he did next. There was covenant. There was there, it was God, and then God created what next? The woman, the man, the man, the man. The man. So let the me man. show y'all something. Yeah, the man. Let me show y'all something. Now let me shock your whole theology, but give you the truth according to the Word of God. Before you can have a spouse, you've got to have right relationship with who. God. God first. God first. Because God created the man and then he created marriage. Do y'all see that? God yes. gave man covenant relationship himself. And then he saw what man needed. But man had to have covenant with God first before he could have covenant in a marriage. So if a marriage, if say two people are married and they don't have covenant with God and they and they we got covenant with each other, they basically have made themselves God. Amen. Because there is no covenant with God. There has to be covenant with God. And actually, to be honest with you, when you really just follow it according to the order and the protocol of things, it is the man that has the covenant with God. Because who was created first? The man. man. Who is it that if, if they're not right, in the relationship, 
their prayers get hindered. Who is it? Anybody can answer that. The man. The man. The man. It says that joker, if that joker ain't right like he's supposed to be, his prayers would be hindered. And technically, it's what he say that sets and establishes the family order. We're just intercessors, incubators, nurturers, but it's what he say. So the first covenant was with the man. God established his, he establishes everything with the man. And then he looks at the man and says, now you're ready for a wife. Now you're ready for her. It's not good that you should be alone. So I'm going to create her as a help me to you. But it is to help you take care of what I have already given you. Y'all missed that part. So he already had it when she showed up, right or wrong? Right. So I'm literally about to have to bust the bubble of the women that think that. He get it after me. Might be raising a son. Watch the order. Go through the order again. Somebody quote the order for me again. It was God first. God first, man, and then woman. Mm -hmm. God first, the covenant with man. Well, a man has covenant with God, then the woman. Mm -hmm. And then he created her to help to meet the goals he'd already placed inside of the man. The goals he had already placed inside of the man. So now the man makes the covenant with his wife. And it is the responsibility of the man to literally communicate to his wife the way things are supposed to go. Am I still in the book or did I leave it? Amen. So Adam was already there. The garden was already there. He had already been given the instructions by God of what to do in the garden. And all because it was already there, God then gives him a wife, which was to help him meet the necessary requirements and stuff of the garden. So it was his responsibility to convey to her mm -hmm. what it was mm -hmm. that God had said and how things were supposed to be orchestrated, right or wrong. Or did the Bible say that Eve had a conversation with God and God told her how it was supposed to go? Which way did it? Which way did it say it? conversation with man the husband got the conversation from God got the order and right. the instructions from God absolutely right me cool. he got the instructions from God conveyed the instructions over to the woman so now I'm going to help y'all understand why we are women why we as women are under attack we literally are under a position of attack because we are known at the Bible clarifies us as the weaker vessel. The weaker vessel. Now, I want to show y'all something just in human analogy. Go into your human mind. Let me show you something. <coughs> the woman was extracted from what part of the man's body? <coughs> Say that again. 
the rib, which is how many parts of the body? One. One part. So this man has a full body. Adam has a full complete. He's complete, right? Right. She's only taken from one portion of him. In your human mind, I want you to visualize a whole man. And then I want you to visualize a real. Didn't even say a slab. He just said a real. It didn't even say a whole slab. It just said a real. Now, when you visualize that, I want you to tell me which one of those is more complete. The male. The male. The male. The male. The theology of being out here as independent women is a wrong theology, y'all. It's a wrong theology. It's a wrong theology. I remember God telling me some years ago and explaining this, showing this to me when you actually think about a rib. Does a rib have legs? You don't. Mm -hmm. Does a rib have eyes? Sure mm -hmm. don't. Hands. Mm -hmm. Does it even have a head? No. In all actuality, to be honest with y'all, we are supposed to be complete in a husband. She is actually supposed to be a reciprocation of him. I have to tell y'all the truth because I don't want to be responsible for not telling the truth. Now, whether you choose to do it or not, I mean, you can go be with whoever you want to, do what you want to. That's your life. But I'm going to tell y'all the truth according to the biblical principles of how it's supposed to be. The first thing that Adam said when God presented that woman to him, he said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. He literally was saying, this is a reciprocation of me. This is a image of me. The wife should look like the husband. I don't mean in a literal sense, but if y'all pay attention when people have been together long enough, what do people usually say about them when they've been together for a long time? Not a lot of <laughs> They start to look alike. <laughs> and here's what people will say. That is because they have taken on the same nature. They've taken on the same nature. It's reciprocated. They pretty much know how to complete each other's thoughts. Uh, they pretty much know, you know, um, what the one like, what the one doesn't. Uh, it's, they, they are very entwined with each other because she came forth from him. What you see happening now in society is men coming forth from women. Which is not the order, right or wrong. Rich, you are right. Not the it's not the order. Absolutely. It's not the order. And usually when you see a woman doing it like it's supposed to be done, she gets picked at. 
You know, she's stupid for him or however the case may be. She gets picked at because of the way society has deemed for it to be in order to knock us off course. To get us out of the positions of where we are supposed to be. Um, <clears throat> I would be uh, bold enough to tell y'all that majority of the things that you are looking for, the things that you are seeking for, that you are asking for, they are somewhere entwined to a covenant. It's somewhere entwined in a covenant. Some type of a, a covenant. Which would mean that there are some things we as women are just, it's out of our lead to do, even though women do it. Amen. I think it was a smart thing. I 100% agree. And if I lived back in the time when they did it, I think it's a very smart thing when they had made the decision to not let women do certain things, such as, you know, they wouldn't let women go into war. And they definitely said that a woman shouldn't be on the front line, but you know, you got off into all of this type of stuff that started happening in society and society started going through all this um, about being created equal. And in all actuality, to be honest with y'all, um, um, you know, I mean, I probably would get bashed for this because they'll call this old school, but uh, a lot of old school stuff is the truth and you don't need to run away from the truth. So you need, you know, you need to do what the Bible says in Proverbs. It says, buy the truth and sell it not. But listen, I would behoove to say this to y'all. I just got through showing y'all a few minutes ago. I compared a full mm -hmm. man and a rib and asked y'all which one of the ones was complete. So being that I asked y'all which one was complete and um, those of you that chose to, spoke, to speak up, you said that the male was complete. Okay, so... In that analogy, meaning that this rib is not complete. So, you know, a woman is complete when she's within him. But um, with this rib not being complete, would you want to put a rib out on the front line to be battling? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, no. No. The design of the woman. Oh, okay. I'm going to let y'all tell me. Give me some examples of what y'all think we were designed for. What is the design of a woman, you think? What were we, what were we designed for? What are, what are some attributes about us? Caring and nurturing. Mm -hmm. A helpmate. Um, you got to say it right. You can't together. say helpmate. The Bible doesn't call it a helpmate. It's a helpmeet. Watch the word. Watch the word. It's help meet, M E E T. It's not help mate. Help me. Mm, it's not help mate. That's what's done confuse a lot of folk. So caring and nurturing, okay. help meet, and what else? Uh, keeping the family together, caring for the family. All right. Anybody else? What are some characteristics uh, and attributes right. of a woman? Say it again. Pray, pray. Um, sometimes you have to be like a, um, I guess a shining, a, a place of comfort for the men. Which is, I know she said nurturing, but uh, one of the things I noticed is that women um, played a role of like getting him into this vulnerable place. I guess is what I'm trying to say, to where he's always open and he can just be. And in his environment, his home, because he has to go out and deal with so much in society. Um, I don't really know the, the words for that. All of that goes into that caring and that nurturing. Okay. All of that goes into that. Out of the multiplier. Mm -hmm. yeah. She is a multiplier. Most definitely. She is a multiplier. Most definitely. All right. So let's go over to Proverbs 31. 
Let's go over to Proverbs 31. And go over to um, verse 10. Start at verse 10. Verse 10. <clears throat> I am yet a believer of being somebody's wife. I I'm, I just believe it. I feel like something is, is something about my prosperity is connected to it. And if you are a woman, mm -hmm. yours is too. All right. <sighs> Okay, so Proverbs 31 and verse 10, these are the reason why women be going, you know, we get attacked so much, y'all. All right, so verse 10 says this here, who can find a virtuous woman? Virtuous literally means power or strength. Who can find a powerful or a strong a woman with strength? For her price is far above rubies. Y'all to pay attention to that. Your price is high. That's why you shouldn't ever settle. Because your price is high. It's high. It has a lot of value to it, y'all. It's high. It's far above rubies. If she manifests the strength, if she manifests the attributes that a woman is supposed to have, that chick price is far above rubies so she shouldn't be the type of chick that just allows herself to be handled and laid upon and not even taken to be a wife but just you know sexed and all that type stuff why because why why what did the scripture just say about us what is her price far above rubies so she's delicate. The heart of her husband. Check out what it says. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. I ain't worried about it. She got it. She can make the decision. I just told y'all earlier, when Adam saw Eve, he said, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She was a replica of him. She looked like him because she came from him. Her conversation should match her husband's. Her conversation should match her husband's. If she finds herself in predicaments where the husband is not there, her conversation should match his. He trusts safely in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. I just told y'all. He trusts her because he has no reason to not. To not at all. No reason to feel unsafe to not trust her at all. Has no reason. Now, because this is the characteristics of a woman, you and I, I've been guilty of doing it because I've done things out of wedlock. Meaning that I've been with men and I wasn't married. And I would find myself doing these things with men that wasn't even my husband because it's our nature to do. But what it does is, is it does damage to a woman in the most detrimental way I'm going to show you. It does damage. It puts women in a predicament when we have given ourselves in an environment that does not have all, doesn't carry the whole capacity of what the Bible says. And we give ourselves to it. We end up empty handed. God, why you got me here today? We end up empty handed. We, we we end up empty-handed, period. We end up empty-handed. But we can't help the fact that we are doing that because it's just our nature to do. 
it's within us to do because that's how we were created. That's how we were designed. We were designed to be everything that y'all called out. I wrote it down. Caring, nurture, help me, uh, loving, even an intercessor, a protector, a multiplier. Boom. We were created that way. Why? Because we were taken from some man. There is a covenant somewhere. There is a covenant somewhere. There is a covenant. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all don't hear me this morning. There no, is a. No, I heard your pastor. I heard. <laughs> there is a covenant somewhere. There is a connection somewhere for you. There is a covenant. There is a covenant somewhere for you. There is a covenant somewhere for you. So the heart of a husband does safely trust in her, so that he have no need for spoil. Verse twelve says she will do him good, baby. And not evil all the days of her life. Uh, He ain't got to worry about her doing nothing, you know, to hurt him or anything. Because she will do him good. She's not trying to hurt him at all, man. It's just not her nature to do at all. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Now... This goes against, um, there are some, you know, some women that are, uh, you know, they're known like stay-at-home wives and, and that type of stuff. The husband chooses for it to be that way. She just takes care of the kids, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, that's the way, you know, they have chosen for that to be. According to the scripture right here, she does bring something to the table. She does bring something to the table. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly willingly with her hands. So she's literally going to be creating some things to make sure that it is suffice within the house. Maybe, you know, even if she's crafting the kids clothes or or whatever the case may be, she's going to make sure that things are easy within the house. Verse 14. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. Literally. Now, when it's talking about merchant ships, y'all know how we get things ported in from like China. Those are merchant ships. Ships that are carrying precious cargo in order to supply a place. It says that this woman is like a merchant ship. She's willing to go to do what needs to be done. (coughs) Excuse me. If she has to work in a field, she's willing to do that. She gets the food from afar. Verse 15. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her households and a portion to her maidens. So she gets up early to handle business like she's supposed to. She's not a slouch woman. She's not one just laying around, you know, in the bed. You know, that that she 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 don't get out like that. She's getting up early to do what needs to be done. And because this woman is in such good shape, remember, it says she has maidens. Remember back in those days, they had maidens, you know, uh, they literally had those. And their maidens were young ladies that they were rearing up. Not necessarily so much of those women being slave for them, but it was young ladies that they were mentoring and they were rearing them up to become wives in order to know how to take care of their houses. And so when you are a real woman, a legitimate woman, you should be rearing up other young ladies in the ways that they are to go you know you should be uh that thought crossed my mind this morning about my grandbaby it's amazing that I will be saying this because I thought about that with Tootie and like I told y'all I showed Tootie how to groom herself this morning and to how to shoot TikToks to do a get ready with me because I did one and so I showed her how to do that and so this 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 talks about how the woman takes the young ladies and she rears them up in the way that they are supposed to go showing them what it is that is supposed to happen she gives a portion of what she has to her handmaidens verse 16 says she considers a field and buys it she buys it now check it out told you this is a woman but she's a help meet but she knows exactly what to do with what they have. 
She's not wasteful of what they have. She literally knows how to make decisions. She considers a field and buys it. Now, this takes away the whole myth of, of, of the mindset of women when they stuck in a place of uh, they can't make no decisions. You know, that that that's not that's not the biblical way that God has designed it. She has a mind. She has a brain. She's not, um, you know, just uh, just don't know how to think. That's a child. That's not a woman that is a kid that doesn't have functionality to be able to think because this woman considers a field. She sees that this is a good move for the family and she considers the field and she buys it. Oh, wait just one second. They got an acre of land for sale over here and this ain't but $3,000. Wait a minute. Hold on. We got, we got, uh, let's get this right here. Why this is a great deal that's going. She does that. She, she considers the field and she buys it with the fruit of her hand. She planted a vineyard. So she's continually sowing out different things, continually sowing out. She's sowing. That's what that with the fruit of her hand. She planted a vineyard. She's consistently sowing out. This woman has sense enough what to do. She knows how to take the things from the house and make sure that there is seed put out in order for the house to continue to have things coming in. She's that type of woman. She's smart. She's not sitting there just sitting on everything. Listen, I need to tell y'all something in order for y'all to understand. I am a becoming woman. You better hear what I'm saying and literally a becoming wife transforming before your eyes something has got to literally happen for me I just refuse to believe that it's not my covenant it part of my prosperity is connected to my covenant I know this but listen to what this woman has the ability to do she's smart enough to know where to put seed She's smart enough because she's making sure that the functionality of this house doesn't stop that it is continuously. So she's smart enough to know where it is to put seed. She says, but I need to buy this right here. And but I need to sow this right here. She's the one that's smart enough to do it. Told you she's far above rubies. Her price is far above rubies. She's nothing to play with when she's a real woman. Verse 17, she girdeth her loins with strength. And strengthens her arms. So she's not lazy. She's not afraid to move. She's not afraid. She has a strength about herself. Now, granted, she knows how to be a woman. But she has a strength about herself. She knows when to make the right moves. Why is it that she is so strategic and why is it that she has the ability to be able to do these things? Because remember, she came from him. She's a replica of him. She has strength. She has ability. She looks out for the family. Verse 18, she perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. She knows what she's got. She knows exactly who she is. She's not sitting there struggling with her esteem. She's not sitting there struggling and battling internally with things. She's not getting stuck. She's not sitting there battling with low self-esteem. She's not sitting there battling with insecurities. She knows what she brings to the table is good. She knows it. She knows what I've set here. Every bit of this that I brought to the table, I know is good. Because I know where it came from. I know the place inside of me that it came from. It did not come from an insecure place, so I don't have to worry about it. It did not come from a place of, of low self-esteem or a place of doubt about myself, so I don't have to worry about what I'm serving. I know my merchandise is good because I know where it came from. I know this. 
She knows it's good, it says. And her candle does not go out at night. Her candle stays lit in the darkness. Okay, let's talk about that. When times get tough, that chick still do what she need to do. She don't stop. She still got light. She's still maneuvering. She's still moving through things. She does not quit. Because dark times have came. Because challenges have shown up. Because attitudes have shifted. She does not stop. She keeps the candle going. She keeps it going. She keeps it going. May the Father help us to do that with who we're supposed to do it with. Because it's real sad. I've done it in cases where it didn't benefit me nothing. And I ended up with the short end of the stick. Trying to be something for a man that wasn't my man. All because it's in me to do. I'm just trying to show you who you are. Verse 19. She layeth her hands to the spindle. And her hands hold the distaff. That's literally uh, talking about, you know, a spindle is in, in like sewing with things. It's just talking about the fact that this woman doesn't have a problem with doing what she needs to do. She lays her hand to it and she stays focused on what it is that she needs to stay focused on. She doesn't allow her emotions to cause her to shift. She doesn't allow herself. She going to go in there and cook because she feel like cooking because she lay in a good place. So she going to go cook now. But then when things are not where it needs to be, you know, there's been a, 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 a disagreement or something. Now I ain't fixing to go cook nothing. And so she doesn't do things like that. She don't handle business like that because she's not emotional. She's a, she's a woman. She has emotions, but she's not emotional. I'm going to say that again. She has emotions, but she's not emotional. One more time. She has emotions, but she's not emotional. There is a difference. There is a difference. Verse 20. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yeah, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. That's where you better make sure you're doing something right now. That right now. That right now. It doesn't matter whether it's, if, you know, somebody that don't have a meal, giving them folk a meal. You better make sure that you do something for the poor. Seriously, a lot of answers is connected to that. A lot of breakthroughs is connected to that. I was um, on a ship and I was, uh, you know, talking to a lady that I met. And, you know, we were talking um, some kind of way we got on the subject. We were, we were talking about food. And I was telling her, I said, yeah, you know, I'm eating this week. I said, usually the first through the third we're fasting. I said, but, um, you know, I decided to wait until after, which we'll start fast tomorrow, y'all, just so, you know, I'll talk more about it later. But I said, I, I you know, this is, you know, it's society, you know, I'm on a cruise, so I'm just going to eat. Part of me felt uh, convicted somewhat about that because I was like, you know, are you choosing the cruise over that? You know what I'm saying? And in that aspect or what have you. And so part of me was like in a wrestle and in a fight um, concerning that. And I was really hoping that if I didn't, that maybe y'all would go on with what needed to, um, you know, to go on. I kind of was watching that to see was y'all going to still carry it through or was you going to not, you know, do it because I wasn't doing it or however the case may be. I kind of watch things, you know, just to be honest, to see exactly where y'all are and where you stand with things because I don't want to be put in a position of idolatry. I am not to be idolized and you better learn to serve God and learn to love God and to do things because it is the thing that needs to be done for you. Fasting is literally killing you and it is literally causing some things to get better for you, you know, for your flesh to be brought subject and all. So I was, you know, just kind of and we were talking on the subject of talking about food and I was saying to her, I said, you know, it kind of saddens me 
um, with sometimes the things that I watch with people with food. It, I said it literally, the Bible talked about how pharmaceutical and how food would be like two of the main things that would be the uh, part of the end time weapons that would be used in order to kill um, to kill people. And if you can, and if you haven't noticed it, it is um, it's things that's happening with food that is literally causing stuff to happen to our bodies. And then there is pharmaceutical, and that means pharmacy you know, which means uh, medicines and things that are happening. So those are like two of the major things that would be part of the the end time, which would cause us to be taken out, you know, with things that would, would happen, they're altering stuff. And I was saying how I would literally, you know, I would witness people how they had, they, they, they won't even share food. They, 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 uh, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they literally, uh, got an issue i mean they are that hell bent with food to the point where i said man i, I i've seen families cook spreads and don't even offer nobody nothing and i you know and me and the lady was talking and i was telling them i said that stuff like that hurts my feeling and it do because yeah that's a sad thing there's nothing that i've ever done or anything that i have that i won't share you know, with anybody, you know what I'm saying? I like literally have to learn to cook like smaller portions because it's just me so that I don't have, you know, extra not because I'm going to eat it up. It's because I don't care about somebody getting it. If I ever expose something that I cook, that means I'm giving it to you. I'm saying if you want some of it, you welcome to have some of it. I don't care. You know, I said, I and I've noticed that I said, man, it's like that stuff is a major killer major killer food and pharmaceutical are the two things and it's in the bible i can look it up and i can show it to you all oh, those two things that it said would be like the detriment or the, the literal killing that satan would use to to destroy us and we know and we were talking about you know we, we were literally talking about that and there are literal people there there are people um that are that are really poor some of them are because of habits that they have and i get that i understand and i respect that some people don't have nothing to eat because they don't want really to mess up their money you know on some type of addiction and now they are without something to eat or what have you but still in a context it in, in, in the literal mind food sustains and so um getting them a meal is like you know still a great help uh, providing something for them is still a great help if y'all have not decided in yourselves to start taking care of and watching out for the poor i would like to encourage y'all as your pastor to be, to do that to please you know you own a box downtown ah the LG Center has a box outside that we own that we should be contributors to ourselves. We thank God for Miss Deborah Greer. Thank God for her. God bless her and the other people that are coming to help it. But that box was literally started by us and we should be contributing with putting some groceries and, you know, some things in it because it is for the poor i'm telling y'all you want to check yourself to watch out about this food and i know it's something i say a lot about and it's because it's an issue and it is an issue that will literally attempt to destroy it is one that will literally attempt to destroy if i'm not mistaken i think the lord has been dealing with sharika um I want to say she shared something with me last night where God has been dealing with her about food. And I saw where she posted something in the group last night about um, about fasting and how the Lord has literally been, you know, just really showing her different things. She even saw how she was able to save money because of not eating out concerning some things. Y'all may think I'm lying and you may just take it as a joke and run on and do what it is that you do. But you'll be sitting at a table at the while with and you would have listened to the things that I've been trying to tell you. You're going to wish you would have heard the stuff that I have literally taken the time out to hear God for to try to tell you because this world is literally getting darker. It's getting darker. It is getting darker. 
It's getting darker. It's going to get dark. I don't care how much you psych yourself up and you know what I'm saying? And you can try to psych your mind to, uh, uh, you know, believe God this, believe God that. And please, by all means, believe God. But you better also know what the word done said is going to happen. The thing that we have to do is focus on saving ourselves from this untoward generation. Make sure that we are in proper alignment so that things does not get us. But we have no control over what's going to happen out there because there is darkness the bible says gross darkness shall cover the earth that's what it says gross g-r-o-s-s gross darkness shall cover the earth so there is some darkness and that is the reason why the bible calls us light it says that we are like we are light we are a city that is set on a hill which cannot be hid why do you need light you need light whenever there is darkness so if God wants you to be an agent of light, that is because there is darkness around. So things are getting darker. Okay. Watch yourself. Make sure that you're doing something for the poor. If you live somewhere in a city where they have the poor people, they kind of, you know, they, 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 they you, you know, you can pretty much look at them and tell some of them would disguise themselves. God bless them. You know, I put them in the hand of the Lord. That's pitiful to even have that kind of mind to disguise yourself, to try to deceive people. But however, if you, you know, you got five, get them even five dollars, get them people, get them something to eat. Or go get them a hot meal. Take it back to them. Or something. You know, if you have the ability to do those type things, do it, do it. That's part of the woman in what she does. You see that in verse 20, verse 21 says she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. So it's saying she's not afraid of cold times. She's not afraid of when the temperature shifts. Those of us that don't face snow, that means she's not afraid of when the temperature shifts. When the seasons change, that chick is not afraid. She's not afraid. She's not. She doesn't have to have the summer all the time. If the weather shifts up and it becomes fall, she can adjust to the fall. The winter shows up, she can adjust to the winter. Spring comes, she can adjust to the spring. She got all four seasons taken care of because she's a woman. She got it. It says, verse 22, she maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. So she knows how to dress for the occasion. That's that. She knows how to dress for the occasion. She knows how she's supposed to look. She's an appropriate looking woman. That's that. Verse 23 says her husband is known in the gates. I need y'all to pay attention to that right now. Her husband is known in the gates. When you understand about gates, gates is the way in or the way out of a city. Her husband is known when people come in, they know her man. When people are leaving out, they know her man. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Literally, this woman speaks highly concerning her husband. Literally, she speaks highly concerning him. Notice now, he is known in the gates because the gates is a place that she visits. Oh, God help me. The gates is a place that she visits. Intercessors are gatekeepers. The gates is a place that she visits because she's an intercessor. So her husband is known in the gates because he has a praying wife. All right, all right, let me pause for a minute. Any questions or any comments, man? Good God. <laughs> no, man. She's at the gates. She's an intercessor. He's sitting among the elders. 
He's handling business. She's interceding. Is that it? Just taking it in. He's handling business. She's interceding. But she's letting it be known. That's my man. My man. My man. Why are you here? He's handling business. I'm interceding. He's taking care of things. I'm in prayer. Any type of, when he's sitting with those elders, they're making governmental decisions. They're making major decisions of what needs to happen. How is the area going to be affected? What laws and things needs to be put in place? And while he's making these decisions, she's interceding. Father, let my husband and those that are around him, those that he's in covenant entwined with, let them make the right decisions. Speak to Amen. their minds concerning the things that needs to happen that will help this area. I need y'all to pay attention to the fact that it talks about the gates, which means they are restricted within an area. And she's protecting the area where they are restricted in. Bless this area where we are. Grant them the minds to be able to think on the level that they need to for this area, God. Whatever it is that he's doing, however he's impacting, allow him to bless this area. Give him the mind that he needs that will cause this area to flourish. That will cause this area to literally have the breakthrough that it is needed. I am at the gate watching to make sure I bind that devil right there. That devil of confusion, I bind it right now and I loose right now the spirit of unity. I see you. I see you, spirit of strife. I bind the spirit of strife right now that will try to cause contentions and divisions. And I loose the spirit of unity among them right now that their minds would be fortitude together and it will literally be as glue. And they will bond together concerning the things that needs to be done as my husband is sitting with the elders. Now check this out. He's sitting with the elders and the other elders' wives are supposed to be sitting right there at the gate as well. So now there are intercessors, intercessors collectively together that are literally praying for the affairs of what is supposed to happen. But what has happened now is, is you see women have gotten out of position and instead of being the gatekeepers to watch the gate, the women are wanting to be the ones inside making the decision decisions and handling all types of things and out of position and showing too much testosterone than estrogen and so you see things are all out of place let's go 24 she make it fine linen and sell it it Chick got a hey, she doing what she do, and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. So she's pretty much an entrepreneur. She has something to bring to the table. Verse twenty five: Strength and honor are her clothing. Strength and honor are her clothing. Strength and honor are her clothing, y'all. This is what she represents. She represents strength and honor. She knows how to honor. Being a woman knows how to honor. Yeah. 
you're not going to catch her being dishonorable. And she shall rejoice in time to come. Why does she rejoice in time to come? Because she consistently walks in a place of hope. She's looking for things to be better. She walks in a position of hope. She's prophesying to the future concerning things being better. So she rejoices in the time to come. Verse 26 Amen. says, she opens her mouth with wisdom. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's not just saying all kinds of stuff and the chick is kind. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Ah, there goes that idolatry. She looketh well to the ways of her household. She doesn't eat the bread of idleness. So check this out. Idleness. Let's talk about it. She's not just wasting time. I tell y'all all the time. And y'all think that I'm being funny about it. And I'm not. I don't watch a whole lot of TV and stuff. Because I feel like I'm wasting time when I do that. Maybe occasionally. But I just don't have an appetite for that. I don't have an appetite to sit up and watch other people's lives, other people's business. You do know that I watch videos, funny videos. I have comedians that I watch, but that is because there is such a laughter box inside of me. I am a comedic person. My number one type of shows, even if I watch a movie, it's going to be a comedy movie or so. Because I like to laugh. You know, I like to laugh because I deal with so much that makes me want to cry. So I'm consistently, I'm watching something. She does not do a lot of idle stuff. Now, if she's sitting and watching a movie with her husband, that's completely different. But she's not sitting up just doing a whole bunch of idle stuff. She's not engaging in other people's affairs and in other people's lives. I tell y'all this all the time, and I'm going to keep harping on it. I'm going to keep saying it because you got to get the picture to realize that those things are thieves. Those things are they are still in moments. There are certain things that could have been prevented inside of inside of your household, inside of your family. Had you been in prayer or paying attention, the enemy wouldn't have even had a foothold to be able to do it. But because you were in the real wives of a real housewives of Atlanta business, and because you were in somebody else's business, the enemy was able to come into your house and to be able to creep in and to do certain things. God couldn't even talk to you about certain things that were gonna happen happen in your household because of the simple fact you were so busy being in somebody else's business. All of that stuff is distractions. All of that stuff is ways that other people are becoming multimillionaires off of people loving their business. Even when you look at what is happening with social media, people are capitalizing so much money off of people being interested in their business. In their business. You got a full man. Now Miss Netta is the name of it. That's a whole man. Man named Joe Robinson. Full man. What a penis. But takes on a character of Miss Netta. And is making millions of dollars off of people. Because people are interested in other folks business. Instead of seeing what is going on in their house. Now, if you have your house taken care of, then you can get a pass. Maybe you can do that. But if the enemy is sneaking in your door, you ain't got a word from God concerning what's going to happen in your house. But then you in somebody else's house, then you out of order. You are literally out of order. It should have been that God showed you in a dream that the enemy was about to come. 
something was about to happen. It should have been where there has been. Remember now, because you're a gatekeeper. So it should have been where you saw gatekeepers see what's coming in and see what's going out. So if you have not saw that this thing was about to come upon your family, this thing was about to happen or so it wasn't revealed to you, nor the, neither was it prophetically given over to you some type of way, then that means you are not in position. You are not sitting where you're supposed to be sitting. Because there should have been some type of communication. Or you can get the communication, but don't take heed to the communication. That's very well possible too. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You sitting at the gate. You sitting at the gate. You there. You there. You sitting at the gate. But you're sitting at the gate and you're not paying attention to all aspects of the gate. <coughs> you don't allow your attention to just be focused on this. And then there is a thief coming in over here on this side because you're not paying attention to all aspects. Gates have four corners. You're not paying attention to all aspects of angles. That can be hit. You're there. Oh I do pray. You're there. But you're not paying attention. Like you should be paying attention. Because something has distracted you. Paying more attention to something else. Remember there's always going to be other distractions at the gate. How do you know? Because there are other people at the gate as well. Remember, he sits with the elders. The elders have wives. Their wives are supposed to be at the gate as well. So if this wife is at the gate and you don't got caught up, I'm just going to use this as an example. You don't got caught up in her outfit. And what she got on, that's a nice outfit right there. And you sitting there and you don't got literally slammed in her outfit. You just focus in on her outfit about, you know, I wish I had that outfit. I wish I, ooh, ooh, I like that right there. And while you distracted in that, then this devil done galloped in and done got into the, now he just done got into the city. And you know nothing about this thing that got into the city because you're not focused. You're not paying attention. Distractions. Very dangerous. And especially in this season now. Distractions. Got to watch it. You got to watch it. You got to watch it. If you are planning to see anything shift for your life. Planning to see anything get better for your life. Get rid of them distractions. Get rid of those distractions. Watch what you are allowing yourself to be caught up in. And that's not to say that you won't have some entertainment. You know, that's not to say taking entertainment away. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you know when you are overindulging in something. When, when your house is under attack. And you don't see this. But you watching TV, you should be slapped. I mean, backhanded slapped. This joker trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And all you focus on is watching a movie. You sick. Something wrong. Something's wrong. It's really bad wrong. He's launching an attack. Literally. And it really, it'd be sad when other people can see it. You don't. It's really get sad then. When they're trying to throw flags and say, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Watch that. You know, the Lord showed me such and such and such and such and such, such, such going on. You will see it. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Remember, y'all, we're talking about a woman. And we're specifically talking about a wife, too. Because it talks about with her husband. So we're talking about a woman. 
and a woman that has become a wife. So if she's missing all this stuff, is she really in position like she should be? I just asked the question. If all this yeah, stuff is I'm being right. missed, is she in position? Yeah, yeah. Can't be. We got to watch this stuff. We got to watch it, y'all. Verse 28 says, Her children rise, arise up, and they call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praises her. He thinks she's the bomb. I hope my dude think I'm the bomb. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. There is something about her that just takes it over the, over the top. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Yeah. So it says favor is deceitful. Let me explain to y'all what that means. Some things we get ain't all by the favor of God. We have stamped God to it, but it's not all God. Some things we be done manipulated and got ourselves. I've done things myself to get certain stuff. Not everything is favor of God. So it says favor is deceitful. You can make it look like it's God, but really it don't be God. And beauty is vain, which literally vanity means it fades away. That's why when you see people, they were so pretty and then they get older and they start their face drying up and they don't look as pretty as they used to because beauty is vain. But a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. I right, verse 31 Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I want y'all to see the location of the woman. She hangs out a lot where? Y'all didn't see it? What does the scripture say she hang out at? Okay. At the gates. What's wrong with y'all today? Where did y'all get stuck? What did I say that made you stuck? Let's unstuck you. Since this woman hangs out at the gates, intercessors. Our gatekeepers. She does what she does, but she's a bad intercessor, baby. She knows how to take care of things, but her baddest job is that intercessor. She's a bad girl when she goes in prayer. Don't play with her. Don't play with her. She's a bad girl when she goes in prayer. And she's not going to let anything keep her from them gates. She's not going to let him having an attitude sometimes keep her from the gates. She's not going to let the children cutting up keep her from the gates. She's not going to let what she's got to do as a woman keep her from the gates, taking care of the household and all. She's not going to allow that to keep her from the gates. She's going in prayer. Any questions? Any comments today? Lord, I want to be that woman. Amen. Any questions? Any comments? Do y'all have that woman in view? Um, do you see her? Are you becoming her? I mean, where are you? Y'all so quiet today. She's in view for me. I can see a lot of the views that I've got it. I'm allowed to be bored into the spectrum, so, yeah. 
She's in view for me. She's in view for me. Yeah. She's in view for me as well. She's in view. Yeah. See yeah, she's in view for me. You know, she's that woman of prosperity, y'all. She's that woman of character. She's that woman of integrity. She's that woman of love. She's that woman of grace. She's that woman of peace. It's her. It's her. It's her. She's that God called woman. That God birthed woman. She's that woman that he said. It wasn't good for him to be alone. She's her. She's her. He's not good being alone from me. It's bothering him bad being away from me. All right. Because it's not good for him to be alone. And if there is someone that is portraying me, I take authority against that deception. Amen. And I lose the moment Amen. of truth. The spirit of truth has to come. That it will be me. That I, I say from the position of the gate, that I occupy. And I dwell in that place. I dwell in that place. It is not good that he should be alone. He literally has cultivated and he's developed because God has given him the instructions. But he's now in a position where he's being said, it's not good that I should be alone. It's not good. It's not good that I should be alone. But he's allowing, this is the thing I want y'all to understand and see. This is the one thing that the man has to do. The man has to allow God to create her. It said, God put Amen. the man to sleep. And God drew out the woman. So there is a such thing as a man jumping ahead of God. And just grabbing something himself. Please understand and know that. That is the reason why I said. If someone is occupying the position. That I am currently supposed to have. May she be dethroned. Because sometimes a man can. I'm just tired of being alone. He'll hit that Al Green. And he'll just grab a woman. Or that, that, uh, a female, I'm going to say it like that. He'll just grab a female. So it's very possible to happen. So I'm calling for order, divine order, to take place. For things to be in the proper alignment that God has it. And may the one that the Lord has that I would spend the rest of my life with, may that one be in the position of realizing that he is not good, that he would be alone and he would allow God to place him to sleep so that he's able to extract me from him. And things can work out because I want the divine will of God. I don't want my permissive will. I don't just want a man. I want the divine will of God to be done. I can get the permissive will and jump out on my own. But I want the divine will of God, which means he will be put to sleep. And God will literally extract me from him while he's asleep. But once Adam came to, God presented her to him. And he was able to see her for who she really was. That's how you will know, ladies. It's all about how he see you. Immediately when he saw her, he knew 
This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She came forth from me, he said. She came from me. This is a part of me. There is no secrets when it's a part of me. Why? Because we are one. I'm entwined with you. So there are no secrets when it's the oneness. So it all worked as it was supposed to. So no permissive will for Delphine. No permissive will for me, but divine will. Divine will. And may he see me as Christ has presented me. Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. And he said, she shall be called woman. For she came forth out of man. She took the name Eve because of the time of the day that she was presented to him. It was after the evening. So it took the name, she took the name Eve. So, depending on the time you are presented to him. I want y'all to think about when she was presented. She was presented to him in the evening, which meant the darkness was coming. Ain't there, there is no better time for him to get you than when he's about to face a challenge so that you're there with him to gird him up. I'm a gatekeeper. In Jesus' name. Any questions? Any comments? some great things that happened for this woman because of her her covenant you know and there are there are some women out here now that don't have husbands that are doing some you know they're doing some things and all but i would to say to you concerning this right here i guarantee you things would be much better if she did have the husband not just a husband but the husband that god has for her because there is a lot that is connected to it he brings about a lot. You know, he brings about a lot. He makes more of a difference than what you could imagine or think. 
they bring about a lot. So, we'll believe in God. Remember, I told y'all February the 19th is the end of the 60-day marriage prophecy. That there should be some, some singles should be dating. Um, that was part of the prophecy. Even that some weddings would be taking place, you know, like really quick. That was part of the prophecy. So, we are believing the Lord for that. That we have that word over us for, till February 19th. There was also a prophetic fulfillment um, given for Sunday, February the 11th. That was a prophetic word the Lord had given me. That will run out February the 11th. We should see some things in February. We should see some things. Also to bring to y'all, on the, um, just so y'all know, February is a leap year this year. And there is a lot of things I was listening to someone discussing about what happens in the Jewish with the Jews concerning the leap year of what they believe. And um, that's actually a good thing. So there's 29 days. So we are leaping into some stuff and we are we are believing God. So we got two prophetic words we know for a fact that we are trusting and believing the Lord for for some things to happen. We also have February 1st, which is the day the queen came in here. So what? February, come on, do me right, February. So February, I know, forty nine. You know, I'm about to look. I, I'm about to look up that forty nine and see what my year would be this time. The four to nine and see what the forty nine represents. But it will be my forty nine. So, um, just really, really believe in God for some things, trusting Him for some things, and so we are. Um, you know, we're setting up in a position concerning some stuff. We're gonna keep moving. To the best of our ability, keep trusting God, keep calling on God, just keep going. That's all I can tell you. That's all I can tell y'all is just keep, keep going. And may the Lord allow us, God. Father, I am asking you now in the name of Jesus to allow us to just become more of what you would have for us to be. I, I don't believe we're in a time where we need to try to be more of what we want us to be and neither even more of what people want us to be. But we're in a position where we might better try to be what you want us to be, God, because it's something about your ways that are more sure than our ways. And your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, Father. And you literally have a better plan than what we could have. And so we need to bring ourselves to a place of literally lining up with you. And we've looked at some things in your word right here today that showed the Proverbs. 31 woman and the attributes that she have and father we thank you for possessing those attributes fathers we thank you for being those gatekeepers for being the intercessors God we thank you that those of us that are single father that the single days are coming to a end father that there is matrimony that is established for us God we thank you for the perfect one we thank you for the perfect and the divine husband father we thank you for him in the name of Jesus God we thank you father we ask that you even bless the current marriages that are already in position and in place among us God we speak life over them in the name of Jesus God and we thank you Father for the spirit of unity being among them Father we thank you Lord for God just the strength of Zion being there in the name of Jesus God Father we thank you we thank you for what it is that you are doing Father Father we thank you that as we endeavor ourselves into fasting and we bring ourselves into living more of consecrated lives that we will die to ourselves and live to you that we will literally succumb to the things of this world father that we won't get caught up in the former pseudos and we won't get caught up in the food father and the negativity of thoughts god that are going in the earth father that we won't get swindled in and caught up into things and be distracted by things but that we will look unto you which is the author and the finisher of our faith that we will literally father establish ourselves and our goings will be upon you father that you will literally become our portion we thank you for the right moment and the right timing concerning everything that we are walking purposely father that we are are everywhere that we go that it would be on purpose that there will be things that will happen insightful things that will happen God that there will be things that push us to the next place father open doors and opportunities that gets us to the next place we thank you for the spirit of prosperity being our portion father we lack nothing we thank you that you are literally pouring out tremendous blessings 
upon us, that you are reigning, God, from heaven upon us, Father, that we are literally under an open heaven, Father, that causes things to happen, that there is healing, that there is finances, that there is breakthrough, that there is deliverances, that there is favor, there is marriages, engagements, Father, we thank you for it in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you that you are literally shutting down the hand of the enemy that is rising up against families, that they will literally be in unison together. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that families and children are being united, Father, in the places where they need to be with their parents. Father, we thank you for the minds of the parents being strengthened to love their young, Father, to take care of their their children and to provide for their children. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are just bringing everything into right perspective where it is supposed to be. Father, we just bless you and we honor you and we adore you. We thank you so much for what it is that you are doing, Father. Singles, I prophesy marriage unto you. Now, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy fruitfulness unto you. Now, in the name of Jesus, marriages, I prophesy that there is hope within your marriage, that there is a unity and love and strength within your marriage, and, and that there is always a bond of forgiveness within your marriage. In the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for what it is that you are doing, God. Continue to be the light upon our pathway, showing us where it is that we are to go. And a special request I have, Father, for you concerning what I am dealing with. You know the thing, Father, and I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I pray, amen, amen, amen. All right, listen, I need y'all as intercessors to be, um, I need y'all to be in prayer uh, concerning me. I want to ask y'all to to please be um, in prayer with me concerning where do I go next? Where do I go next? I want y'all to be in prayer with me concerning that. Where do I go next? It doesn't mean that I'm leaving you, but it does mean that I need a next. So I want y'all to be in prayer with me um, concerning that, just so that you are aware of it. All right. To anybody, uh, we'll start fasting tomorrow. We will. We will go into our fast tomorrow. I tell you what we will do. We will literally hit um, six to three is what we're going to do. 6 a.m. to 3, we'll do water. After that, you have a meal. Now, I'm going to trust y'all. Don't be doing no stupid stuff, please. Have a meal, but don't 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 go crazy like you just ain't, you know, just ain't going to eat no more. Put yourself in moderation to set yourself up to learn to live consecrated. Set yourself up to learn to live consecrated. Consecrated mean that you do eat, but you ain't overindulging. That's a consecrated life. You may catch you a meal a day or so. That's consecration. So 6 a.m. to 3, we're going back in. And we're going in. Um, if y'all would like, each one of you can give me your focus point of what you want to go in if you know it now. If you don't, you can send it to me. And this is what we're going to go in for. Concerning the fast. Uh, so, tomorrow is the 8th. January 8th. Twenty twenty four begins the fast six AM to three PM water only. So if you take medicine, you wanna take it before six AM. If you need to eat with that medicine, you wanna get up and do it before six AM. It's that simple. All right. Y'all want to tell me? Anybody know what it is that you want to believe for 
concerning this fast. Your purpose? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anybody else? Mine is just to want more of my destiny. All right. Anybody else? If you don't have it now, that's fine. You can send it to me when you think of what it is. That you want. Anybody else? Y'all know mine is, where is my next? And I'm going to be promoting um, Free to Be Me. Alright. So if you don't have it, you you know, make sure that you get it to me so I can get it down. The fasting begin. I got a good feeling it's going to run at least three weeks. That's why I didn't give an end date. 6 a.m. to 3, water only. Let's get Repeat it. Again, I got a feeling it's going to last at least three weeks. That's why I didn't give an end date. All right. Any questions or any comments? <laughs> <coughs> moving forward.